It's amazing, isn't it? It is. And then the other approach we had uh, with the NHS was we were doing this 800 calories a day, call it soup, call it oh, whatever my. you want to call it. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but you know, if you're normally burning 2,000 calories a day and now you're restricted at 800, you will get some benefit straight away, but you're probably going to be feeling hungry the whole oh, time. Yes. Oh, you yes. haven't fixed insulin, but your metabolic rate, somebody said to me, I think it was maybe yourself or Jason Fung said, you know, come down 400, your body will do everything it can to drop your energy expenditure by yes. the same 400. Yes. Come down 1,000. It will even try and come down 1,000 by mm -hmm. changing your heart rate. Yeah, your, your yeah. there's an adaptation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you're totally right. But if you go down to that level, you cannot drop your metabolic rate that low. Yeah. Even if you literally do nothing for the entire day, yeah. the very act of breathing yeah. and, and every cell living requires a metabolic rate that is higher. That's, uh, that's essentially creating a metabolic crisis, yeah. and you can only grit for so long. An, an, a, an idea that I had intended to mention and forgot, when I was describing the bodybuilders who are during this very low-calorie cutting phase, to, they've been bulking, bulking, now they need to cut and get super lean, every one of them will document the one thing they will say is that they have an obsession with food. They, are upset. they think about food 24-7. Talk to any celebrity who's had to lose a substantial amount of weight for a role. They will say... I'm obs I was obsessed with food. It was, the, it was a constant preoccupation. A bodybuilder or a movie star with this full team and millions of dollars on the line, they will have a motivation that the average individual will not. While they can get through with just sheer grit and determination that phase and, and a lot of help, the average individual will not. Yeah. Myself included. I don't yeah. mean to cast a lot, uh, aspersions on anyone else. Yeah. I couldn't do this. Yeah. Uh, this you are you will fail. Uh, yep. It requires a level of of just sheer grit and determination and discipline that I'm not ashamed to say I don't have, and most people don't either. Yeah, and let me just clarify that a little bit. So when I was obese, I was obese for 30 years. I was driven by hunger because I was a carb burning machine. The body had no idea how to access the stored body fat. Yeah. Um, Nina Tyshell say, says it well. She said it's like when you can't access it. It's like you've got granola bars wrapped all around yes. your waist, but yeah. you just can't get to them for no, energy. I've used, I've used that same line. In fact, I think Nina must have stole it from me. <laughs> it's basically like you have bandoliers of, of energy bars and energy drinks, and, and you can never open them. I look at where I live in Utah, up in the mountains, it's very common for people to go on hikes. I have a sort of tragic, a dark humor when I see these obese individuals starting a, a two- or three-mile hike, and they have a fanny pack of energy bars and little energy goos that you see people take during marathons and, and triathlons. And I think to myself, you have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of calories stored on your body waiting to be burned. And ironically, you're adding to your mass burden on this hike yeah. by taking more calories yeah. with you. Imagine. But, but, but the tragedy is, is it not that that individual, because they haven't for a period gone away from carbs they are they can't get to it yeah no, that's right the that is the that's the poor metabolic flexibility or the yeah. metabolic inflexibility that's yeah. been identified over the years where essentially they're stuck burning glucose yeah and nowadays people in social media always want to invoke the randall cycle this idea of well the cell can't burn both fat and glucose at the same time well yeah of course it can't um there's you need one primary energy source at any given moment because it's competing for the same biochemical pathways and people want to invoke the Randall cycle as if they're kind of clever. The Randall cycle is simply stated the phenomenon that a cell will burn either glucose or fat primarily at any given moment. Mm -hmm. Well, guess who decides which one it burns? They want to say that it's all a matter of what's available. No, it's not. No, don't tell me that. Because then why is a type 1 diabetic who skips their insulin injections, they have a glucose level of, I'll invoke millimolar for the local audience, yeah. 15 millimolar, yeah. which is three times, four times too high, and yet they're, they cannot stop burning fat? And you're telling me that it's all a matter of what's available? No, I just proved you wrong. Yeah. It's insulin. It's hormones that yeah. tell the body, that tell the cells what energy to burn. Yeah. Yes, the human metabolic machine is a hybrid. It's a genius thing. Relying on either glucose or fats, it's insulin that tells the cell what to burn. Insulin mm -hmm. is what tells every cell of the body what to do with the energy that it has. And maybe just to put the cherry on top of that, statement in my lab at BYU right now we have an incubator that's growing all kinds of cells including fat cells as just a funny point of irony it is very hard to grow fat cells in a culture dish in a petri dish whereas okay. we can grow muscle cells like 
like weeds. Right. The fat cells are stubbornly difficult things to grow. They need a perfect kind of cocktail of, of molecules in order to be told it's time to get fat. We will have the fat cells growing in this dish, swimming in a bath of calories. They have all the energy they need. And so yet you they, got the fat cell surrounded with yes, sugar. Sugar and fats. The, oh, all I, the fuel a fat cell I would ever this want. this is going where I'm thinking it's yeah, going. Yeah, and, and yet they don't grow. We're looking at them day after day. I'll have my student looking at them. Dr. Bickman, they're not growing. I'll say, <laughs> yes, because they don't know yet what to do. This, every cell wants to play nicely with the organism. A fat cell doesn't know what's happening at a muscle cell. It doesn't know that we're up and running. How would it know that? It, it's, it's not running. It's not doing any more work than it ever was. It has to be told what to do. Insulin tells the cell what to do, especially the fat cell. And indeed, the moment we start sprinkling in a little insulin into that bath, check those cells 24 hours later, all of a sudden they have a substantial lipid droplet or they're a chubby cell. Check it 24 hours again, they're even bigger than before. Deprive the insulin, give it a day, and they're all shrunk back down to normal. Wow. A cell must be told what to do with the energy that it has. But in that example, some people who are probably straw manning the view here will say, well, Ben thinks it's only about insulin. No, I've invoked calories as well. Calories matter, but so, but they, but so too does the insulin. In fact, I would even say especially so. Yeah. Because again, if your paradigm is based, if your fat cell shrinking journey is a calorie-based view or, or strategy, yeah, you'll get a little bit down that pathway, but in short order, you'll be right back at the front. Yeah. Because most people cannot get through that hunger without yeah. stumbling. So don't even worry about that. Don't take that calorie step. Let calories be what they may. Yeah. Let the first step be controlling insulin. And then eventually, you will lose weight the fat cells will be shrinking. You'll be relying on your own fat for energy. And then you may find that you've plateaued and you still have more to go. Now you're in a very good position to take that other step of addressing calories, but not by counting calories, not by reducing fat. It is by frequently fasting. Yep. Now you're in a position to have a structured fast and let that be the mechanism whereby you address the energy part yep. of it.